welcome back kiddos. We're going to, in this segment, start moving our way into the calculations involved in phase changes and then in chemical reactions. Now, I, some people do call this a phase change diagram. I prefer not to because it sounds too much like a phase diagram, which is very different. I prefer heating curve and cooling curve. So if you hear me mention heating curves and cooling curves, you'll understand why. Now, um, we're going to look at this going up and going down. I, tried, I tend to draw it up both times. Um, I don't know why, it just seems a little bit simpler. Uh, then trying to you know start over here and come down and and also I like to put heat as my x-axis and so that would put temperature as my y-axis now what you want to do when you're looking at these and asking whether it's exothermic or endothermic ask yourself the question would you put the substance on a stove to facilitate this process so if we're going from the solid phase to the liquid phase, and that would be melting going up and freezing going down. Now, if I wanted to melt an ice cube really, really fast, I'd put it on the stove. If the answer to that is yes, that means it's endothermic. It requires heat and your stove is providing the heat. And in the upward direction, this being endothermic is somewhat intuitive, I think. What's not very intuitive is that the cooling curve would be exothermic. Right? That's not what's intuitive. But we're forming intermolecular forces or bonds if it's ionic, and if you're forming attractions, you release heat. That's exothermic. It requires energy to break the intermolecular forces, the hydrogen bonding in water. And so if we're going to go from solid to liquid, we're going to break intermolecular forces, and that requires energy. Now, going from liquid to gas or vapor, we would call that vaporization boiling point right and condensation okay now which one of those would be facilitated by putting it on the stove well vaporization would so that might help you understand the exo and endothermic directions now that's just a review of the heating curve and cooling curve itself. What I want to look into is the fact that we're going to have five different line segments that we want to look at. We can heat a solid and then melt a solid or the reverse. It would be positive going up in a heating curve, negative going down. Then we can heat a liquid. Should have brought those all the way down. We can heat a liquid. You'll see why in a minute. Okay. We can then vaporize the liquid. And we can heat a gas. Now these have to be five separate calculations. So what we're going to be doing is you may calculate that segment would be segment one. Let's call that Q1 for heat one. This would be Q2 for heat two, Q3, Q4, and Q5. Now there's two constants that we're going to be using. For the ones in which there is a slope, we're going to use heat capacity. So we will have, and, I'll, and it's defined on the next page, it's the ability to hold heat. So we'll have heat capacity, it's a different number for the liquid, solid, and gas. So in those segments, we will use heat capacity. 
and in these plateaus during a phase change there's no temperature change that's critical that's how you recognize the phase change is there's no change in temperature here we have an increase in kinetic energy if we're going up an increase in kinetic energy an increase in kinetic energy here it's about changes in potential energy we're either breaking or forming intermolecular forces if it's molecular covalent or ionic bonds or metallic if it's metals now at the phase changes we're going to be using the constant delta H of vaporization now this is always reported as a positive value and it is positive going in this direction you're going to have to make it negative going in the other direction the heat capacity the calculation will give us our sign you know I just messed that up whoopsie 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 that's not vaporization oh Dr. Leggett silly teacher that's the delta H of fusion okay this is the delta H of vaporization right and it's positive going up and you'll have to know you'll have to understand what's going on and make that negative going down if it happens to be a cooling curve as opposed to a heating curve now we're going to do up to five different calculations maybe one maybe two maybe four or five whatever but whatever we do the total enthalpy change for the whole process will be the sum of these individual calculations. Okay, so I think this is a really good thing for you to study. You want to make sure you wrap your mind around that. Okay, now let's look at some of the definitions and then in the next video we'll actually do some calculations. Now when there is a change in temperature when there's a slope or the diagonals on the graph we're going to use a formula called MCAT and since we're talking primarily about constant pressure processes you'll often see us whip back and forth between enthalpy and Q M is mass in grams C is the specific heat capacity it's the amount of heat necessary to raise one gram of a substance one degree Celsius whoops I'm getting jumpy here sorry okay now uh, it has a standard value for a specific substance and it differs whether we're talking about solid liquid or gas all right and Delta T this is a pretty straightforward one to solve Delta T, remember, is always T final minus T initial. Okay. Now, those will be the calculations where there was a diagonal, either going up the diagonal or down the diagonal. And because we always do T final minus T initial, it will provide, if you do it correctly, it will provide the proper sign. Now, when we are on the plateaus, the flat parts, where we have phase changes, we're going to use given cons our constants. And they're given in either joules per mole or joules per mass. So all we have to do if it's joules per mole is multiply by how many moles we have. If it's joules per gram, we'll multiply by how many grams we have. We'll use dimensional analysis. And this delta H of fusion, delta H, remember, is enthalpy. So this is called the enthalpy of fusion. Delta H of vaporization is called the enthalpy of vaporization. And it's the amount of heat, the kilojoules of heat required to either freeze a mole of water, melt a mole of water, or vaporize a mole of water or condense a mole of water so it would require energy to vaporize it would release energy to condense All right so we're going to be doing these calculations in our next videos so until then this is 
Signing off.